Equifax is reporting that more people between the ages of 25 and 34 are checking their credit reports than ever, but they're also reporting that many of them are still susceptible to many of the credit myths. So what we're going to do today is we're going to bust those credit myths. The definitive guide on how to manage your credit, product, penalty, price in that order. It's never been more important to get your mortgage right. All right, so welcome back. Today we are doing that crazily fun thing that we love to do on this channel, and that is busting credit myths. If you haven't seen it before, we've previously put together a video called The Truth About Credit. You can check it out here. It's got like 35,000 some odd views, I think, as of right now. Um, really great video with respect to your credit and how to manage it. But in today's video, what we're going to discuss is Equifax recent report that millennials between the ages of 25 and 34 are checking their credit more often, which is great because what that means is that they're doing the due diligence to make sure that their credit is perfect. And it's not a substantial increase, by the way, in the number of people that are checking their credit. It's gone from 25% up to 30%. But hey, congrats to my millennial counterparts for taking control of your credit and checking on it on a regular basis. So today what we're going to do is we're going to discuss the credit mess that the millennials are still getting wrong because Equifax did a survey and they pointed out several things that people still just don't get right about credit. But before we get into all the details, do me that favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, please hit that like button so more people like you can see this video. Don't forget about our race to 25,000 subscribers where when we hit 25,000 and we're about 6,000 away right now, so we're getting close, we're going to give away $5,000 to one lucky winner. And that $5,000 can be used for whatever you like. Maybe it's to pay down some debt or to use it for a down payment or to pay down your mortgage a little more or maybe just go and buy some stuff. Totally up to you, but one thing's for sure, you have to be subscribed to win. So go ahead, click that subscribe button. It's free, it's easy, and it's definitely worth it. So let's get into it. Let's discuss credit myths. And these are straight from Equifax. I've adjusted them just a little bit to make it so they aren't all false or all true. But for the most part, these are directly out of Equifax's most recent survey. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through, I'm going to ask you the question, and then I'm going to elaborate a little bit on each of the topics. So the first question, first and foremost, is if you have good, good credit, does it mean you will always get approved? True or false? Well, many people, actually 48% of people, believe that this is true, but the reality of it is, is it is false. For the most part, the people who decide whether or not you are going to get approved for a loan are the people lending it. They use the credit bureau as a means of determining whether or not you're worthy of getting that loan. So they'll check your credit, they'll take a look at your credit score, and they will assess your income and your other debts and so on and so forth. And then they will make a decision based on their own criteria. The credit bureaus never get into actually making the decisions, they just provide the information. The only third party to a lender that ever really makes any sort of decisioning with respect to getting a loan is insurance companies. When you're buying a house and putting less than 20% down, they will often give a yay or nay with respect to giving insurance. And of course, if you are putting less than 20% down, you absolutely need insurance. But for the most part, lenders almost exclusively decide whether or not somebody is going to get approved for credit, whether it's a loan, a car loan, a student loan, or a credit card. Next question is, your income does not affect your credit score. Well, is this true or false? Well, true to a certain extent, but for the most part, this is true. So there are certain scenarios where yes, your, your income will influence your credit score. Obviously, if you make a greater amount of income and you have a lower amount of debt, your credit score is going to be higher and you're gonna be more able to make your payments. So yes, it has an influence on it, but for the most part, your income does not affect your credit score. It doesn't show up on your credit bureau. Uh, your, your previous jobs and your current job will show up in your credit bureau, but your actual income won't. And it has no bearing on the actual score itself. Okay, so third myth, you have more than one credit score. This is actually true. So you actually have multiple credit scores and you may actually have multiple credit scores with with one agency. So Equifax, for example, has multiple scores. They have a consumer score. They have a beacon nine. They have several other scores that depending on what you were look, where you were getting it from and who's looking at it, it will give actual different scores. So quite often the consumer score that you would get from Equifax is different than the free credit score than you would, that you would get from a place like Borrowell or Credit Karma. And a credit score that they have will be different than the credit score that somebody like myself will have when I'm going to assess you for a mortgage. So we use what's called Beacon 9. It is different than the credit score that 
the free credit agencies use, and it's also different than the one that Equifax will give you directly as a consumer. So you can get up to three different Equifax scores pretty easily in the market right now. And on top of that, you can also have a TransUnion score, which is the other credit bureau company in Canada, and they have multiple scores as well. So you can have five, six, 10 credit scores and not even know it. What matters is that you pay your bills on time. Don't worry so much about your credit score and what each individual credit scoring agency says. Just make sure you pay your bills on time. Keep your ratio of your outstanding debt to your available debt really low. So in other words, borrow less than you have available to you and your credit score should be really, really good. Okay, fourth myth, checking your own credit score hurts your credit. This is false. So you can go directly to the credit agencies, whether that be Equifax or TransUnion, and you can pay to get your credit score from them and to just make sure that there's no errors and that it is still in good form. You can also go to free agencies like Borowell, Credit Karma, Karma, Mogo, and you can pull your credit there. Now, keep in mind that companies that are giving you your credit score for free are doing so in order to sell you things like other credit cards and so on and so forth. So be cautious with those, but you can pretty much rest assured that if you're checking your own credit score, it won't count against you. Where it counts against you is when you're applying for a loan. So whether it's a mortgage, a car loan, a credit card, that's when you'll start to see the credit score pulls and you will start to see it decrease your credit score. Now, if you're legitimately looking for credit, you really don't have to worry about this. It drops your points a couple times each time. But if you are trying to buy a car every month for 12 months and get a mortgage every month for 12 months and a credit card every month for 12 months, that will have an adverse effect on your credit score. Next, people avoid using credit have higher credit scores. This is false. So this is kind of one of those catch 22s in life. If you use credit and you utilize it responsibly, you're going to have a higher credit score than somebody who doesn't use it at all. But if you've got credit cards and you use them every once in a while and you keep a pretty low balance, you don't have to worry about your credit score being low. It just won't be as high as people who utilize it. And here's a rule of thumb. If you've got two or three different options, so credit cards, loans, so on and so forth, that are available to you. You use them once a year, maybe twice a year in order to make sure that, they're, that they stay open and you continue to have them for a long period of time and you never miss a payment, you're gonna have a good credit score. You won't have as good of a credit score as somebody who say runs $5,000 a month on their credit card every month and has a car loan and makes all their payments on time, but you're still gonna have a good enough credit score to get a loan pretty much anywhere. So don't think that you have to utilize it. Just think, I wanna have credit available to me. I wanna use it on a sporadic basis. And main thing is keep those balances low, low, low. So pay it off every month as fast as you can and try not to use credit as much as possible. Don't go borrowing money just for the sake of having a high credit score. It's not worth it. It can get you into trouble but make sure that you've got at least some credit available to you. Next myth, credit reports do not contain RSP balances. This is true. Credit reports do not contain your RSP balances. They just don't have it reported on there. Um, credit is about credit. It's about how much you borrow, not about how much you have. So they aren't gonna monitor things like your RSP balances. Now, who does have access to your RSP contributions at least is Revenue Canada. You can pull up a report, see how many contributions you've made and how much contribution room you have available to you. But for the most part, uh, credit bureaus are not going to have access to this unless you have what's called an RSP loan, in which case they'll have how much you have had loaned to you and how much you owe and what your payments are. But unless you've got those RSP loans, RSPs do not appear on your credit bureau. Next myth, married people have a joint credit report. This is false. So married people, when you go to apply for a loan, actually when anybody applies for a loan with another person, you can you can have what's uh, called a joint credit bureau pulled. And what that means is they pull the credit bureaus for both of you at the same time. And this is something that you used to get a deal if you pulled a joint credit bureau instead of two single credit bureaus. You don't get that anymore as a lender or as a or as a mortgage broker or so on and so forth. But all the joint credit bureau would do what it would be, it would put all of the liabilities of both parties on a single page instead of having it on two separate documents. So it wasn't really a big deal. Um, it definitely didn't necessarily mean that you had a joint bureau with your spouse. Bureaus are almost always separate. And just because you've got a spouse with good credit, that doesn't mean that it's bringing up your credit. It might help that they're wearing off on you and being a positive influence and you're making your payments and so on and so forth. 
But the reality of it is, is that your credit is your credit. Your spouse's credit is their credit. You may have joint credit cards or joint loans that appear on both of your credit scores, but your own credit score is yours. It's personal to you. And it has to do with you making your payments, not necessarily somebody else. Now, where things can go wrong here is in the event that you have a spouse, that maybe you're going through a separation or a divorce or maybe they're just responsible for paying the bills and you have a joint mortgage or a joint credit card with them and they don't make the payments on that and you assume that they did well that can affect your credit one of the biggest things we see when we see separation or divorce um, situations is we see one party stops making the payments on something because they believe it's the other person's responsibility and both of the people's credits get trashed so make sure if you have joint accounts that show up on both of your credit bureaus that those joint accounts are getting paid on a monthly basis regardless of whose responsibility it is because ultimately if you borrow the money and you are on the account you are just as much responsible as the other person Missing a credit card payment can stay on your credit for seven years. This is true. So if you miss a credit card payment, it's going to be there for seven years. If you miss multiple in a seven year window, that starts to really damage your credit. And if you start to get to three or four missed credit card payments in a seven year period and they all show up, then you're starting to look at a low credit score. So you wanna make sure that if you miss one payment for the next seven years, you're really, really good because those missed payments stay on your credit bureau for a very, very significant amount of time. So those are seven credit bureau myths busted. Uh, again, these are directly from Equifax. I tweaked a couple of them just to make sure that they weren't all false or weren't all true. But for the most part, this is what you need to know about credit. If you want to go further into credit, take a look at our truth about credit. I'll link it up again there. And if you found this video useful, do me that favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. Please hit that like button so more people like you can see this video. Don't forget about our race to 25,000 subscribers and we'll see you on the very next video. Cheers.